Hi everybody, welcome to Clashine. I'm delighted that you're joining me for this live Q&A session about wet felting. If you are actually watching on the replay, please feel free to drop me a comment and I am very happy to answer your questions afterwards. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Nicola Brown. I'm a textile artist based in Ireland. That's Ireland, Europe, not Ireland, Ohio. And I've been teaching felt making here at home and internationally since 2009. So I hope today this will give you just a little appreciation if you're new to felt making. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm just going to go through a little bit about the basics, share some of my favorite tools, my favorite felting book, and then answer your questions. So the first question really is, what is wet felting or what is felt? Felt is a non-woven fabric it's usually made from wool. And once it has been created, it's absolutely impossible to pull it apart. So in simple terms, it's non-woven, usually made from wool. Merino is probably the most well-known wool, but you can also felt with alpaca, with llama, with yak, many different animal fibers. So if you, are new to wet felt making, you may be wondering, do you need a lot of supplies? So it's really, really simple to get started. You only need the fiber that you're working with. Um, so in my case, that is usually wool. I work on bubble wrap predominantly. In America, many people use solar pool cover, but personally, I find bubble wrap is more flexible and it's easier to handle. I like to upcycle things. I have as much sustainable ability in my practice as possible. So I just recycle bubble wrap from packaging if I can. And then you're going to need a soap. So for me, again, a simple natural soap. I don't use washing up liquid, for example. This is an olive oil soap. So I need wool, I need bubble wrap, I need soap, I need water and I need my hands. And those are the absolute basics. If you have all those ingredients, you're going to have the supplies that you need to create a beautiful piece of flat felt or sculptural felt. So I, I'm just wondering where some of you are tuning in from. If you feel like dropping me a comment, that would be lovely. And I'll just know what part of the world you're in. But Many of you are familiar with Merino, which, which often comes from New Zealand, Australia, or uh, South America, from uh, other countries too. But in different parts of the world, people felt with different fiber. But the main thing is fiber, soap, water, and your hands. Now, there are also fibers and different things you can add to the surface of your felt and those are called embellishments. So an embellishment is something that enhances the surface of the felt. For example, I have a bangle here and this bangle is felted from a couple of different colors of wool and this has silk embellishing fibers on top and the embellishments just give an added interest to the surface. But if you're a knitter, you can use knitting yarn, you can use acrylic yarn, it does not have to be wool. You can even use yarn, silk yarn with beads, glass beads in the yarn. And all of these are possible to incorporate into your felt. Now, if you have never felt it before, I do have a full step-by-step -step wet felting tutorial on my YouTube channel and that is something that you can just look through and it takes you step by step through the whole process of felting a piece of flat felt from start to finish. So I'll drop a link in the video description below as well. So wet felting, it is creating a non-woven fabric using animal fiber with optional embellishments using water, soap and your hands but there are also some tools that are helpful to have and obviously make life a little bit easier. 
So one of the things I like using is this. This is called a ball browser. This is a sprinkler for sprinkling my water onto my fiber. But if you don't have one of these, you can just punch some holes in the top of a drinks, you know, bottle like a soda bottle, and that will work at the beginning. But as a professional maker, it's important, I feel, to have the right tools that save time because time is vital and time also saves money. So this particular sprinkler has very little holes. It can give me a fine spray. But if I'm doing a big project, such as a rug, in fact, I might actually like to use a knapsack sprayer or a pump sprayer for the garden because then I can cover a wider amount of uh, fiber at the one time when I'm wetting it. So obviously you're going to need a bowl for your water. And if you're making um, something that you need to use as scissors, the scissors that I particularly like are Fiskars. You might want to cut some yarn or some embellishments or something. So I like these because I'm ambidextrous and I can use them with my left and my right hand and they are very sharp. So those are the basic tools and things I need to make a piece of felt. Now I've explained what embellishments are but there are also um, different felting tools that can make things very very simple for you and quite a number of years ago one of my great friends she's a wonderful designer and she is a felt maker her name is Nikki Collier. Nikki approached me because she actually uh, hasn't got the full use of her second hand. So she's felting and laying out her fiber, working her felt primarily with one hand. And Nikki, coming from a design background, wanted some input from, from somebody else, which was me, into designing some felting tools that would make life a lot easier. So we have two tools, which I particularly like myself. And the first one is a roller. Now there are many felting rollers available and out there to buy, but this one, the way Nikki designed the grooves, for some reason, this seems to give the maximum, the maximum effect for the least amount of work, particularly if you're working with one hand. And this particular roller, the name of these products is Nikki and Nikki. This particular roller has got a curved end here and a flat end here. So it's also really, really helpful when I'm working on sculptural pieces, such as a vessel, because I can put this in, I can work around and I can put it in like this as well. I can bang on the outside or I can roll it. So I have plenty of options for shrinking felt and shaping felt with one of the rollers. There are many different sizes, but this minimalist is my favorite size. And then another felting tool that we worked on that I find phenomenal is called a prodder. Uh, the more recent versions, this was a prototype, the more recent prodders have a slightly longer um, curve at this end. But again, these are fantastic for shaping and uh, working the inside of vessels. And if you're making slippers or a felt bag for, for working out seams at the edges. So, that's something that I really like. But if you don't have access to felting tools, you could just use a spoon from your kitchen. Fantastic. These work really well also. And if you're interested in these felting tools, uh, Nikki has actually very kindly said she will give anybody who is interested um, and uses my link in the video description, which I will upload afterwards. So she will give you a discount. So that's really nice. So thank you very much, Nikki. Thank you for inviting me to collaborate in the first place and thank you for giving people a discount. Um, so I'm really uh, delighted here to say hi to, to um, Claude. Claude is watching it in Cork, that's in Ireland. And also Safina, thank you so much for joining into this live screen, stream. It's great to see you both here. Um, now, I'm just going to move on a little bit. I just need to go back here. Um, so I've explained what wet felting is, the tools and the materials that make life easier. There is one other thing that I find very helpful, uh, or two other things, in fact. So when I started felting, I was just using soap and water. 
I was making a liquid solution of the soap, the olive oil soap. But once I started participating in online and, well, in-person workshops, I was introduced to the concept of a felting net. And initially, in books, I had read about using tool netting, which is a sort of netting ballerinas wear under their skirt. I had tried that and I found that the wool fibers stuck to this net. So when I was in Denmark at a felting symposium, I was introduced to the concept of using a piece of an old net curtain, or you can also use mosquito netting. And this is really phenomenal because I can lay this net on top of my fiber, the wool fiber that I have already added water to. I put the net down and then I use my soap on top of the net and I can really refine the quantity of soap that I'm adding to my wool. And this does make a difference. The amount of soap you use makes a difference in how quickly your felt comes together. The higher the micron your wool, the coarser the diameter of the wool fiber, the more soap, in fact, that you need. So by applying the soap through a net, I am able to have a more accurate amount of soap on my work. And that's something that comes from experience. And I also like using bamboo or sushi mats, either bamboo blinds or just simple place mats or sushi mats instead of bubble wrap for some pieces. It does help them shrink more when you get to a certain stage. And it, they're very good if you're making bigger pieces such as a rug or something. I mean, a lot of what I make and what I have time to make currently is small, but um, the, the bigger pieces that take weeks to make, I had one rug that took me six weeks to lay out and felt by hand. Those pieces I would always use larger mats for. So um, I'm just wondering, have any of you got any favorite felting books? Because interestingly, my favorite um, felting book as a more experienced felt maker is also the book that I absolutely loved at the very, very beginning of my felting journey. It's by a wonderful English felt maker called Sheila Smith, and her book is called Felt to Stitch. Now, this book may look a bit dog-eared now, and in fact, if you order this online, I'll drop a link again in the video description below after the live stream ends. So this book may have a different color. It's called Felt to Stitch by Sheila Smith, and that is the most wonderful book. So the reason I particularly love that book is because Sheila takes you through, let me see, can I play the video here? Sheila takes you through things from the start to finish she talks both to the beginner felt maker and the more experienced felt maker. You learn about colors, about dyeing, about the basics of flat felting, about blending colors, shiburi, nuno felt, three-dimensional felting, and Sheila also has a section about um, needle felting. And there are projects such as this notebook cover, which was one of the projects I made early on when I started felting and I used Sheila's instructions. So I cannot recommend this book enough. My absolute top pick as a beginner felt maker and as an experienced felt maker, Felt to Stitch by Sheila Smith. So drop me your favorite book in the comments below. Now, I'm just wondering, um, has anybody got any questions for me? Is there anything you're particularly interested in? I did have somebody beforehand send me a message and they said they were very interested in felt pods. So I think they didn't have a specific question about felt pods, but for those of you new to felting, they're like a little birdhouse potentially with a long tail. So I think I'm going to make a separate video about them rather than try and describe them now. But if you are interested in making felt jewelry, in flat felting, in felting to eco print, I have quite a few 
free tutorials on YouTube, but you can also join my workshop mailing list. And that's a great way of keeping up to date with what's happening and my upcoming online workshops. I do have an online workshop starting this uh, at the end of this week. And all my workshops are online for months on end. So this particular workshop, it's an eco printing workshop, um, an intensive six module workshop, but it also has felt making. And there is something very interesting about felt making for eco printing because I'm dropping things here. With this bangle that I showed you earlier, there is a tutorial here on YouTube. This is made with merino and silk embellishing fibers. But if I'm planning to felt and then eco print, I need to use embellishing fibers that are not actually animal fiber. It may not be possible to see this very clearly here, but there's some beautiful white shimmer on top of this eco printed sample. And that shimmer is there because I'm actually using a cellulose fiber instead of a uh, protein-based animal fiber. And with eco printing, without using traditional powdered mordants, the felt, when I felt it, animal fiber absorbs the color easily and cellulose fiber doesn't. So for me, when I'm making felt to eco print, I will use cellulose embellishing fibers. So just to recap, wet felting is using an animal fiber and it is created using soap, water, friction from your hands. I like to work predominantly in bubble wrap. And once the felt has been created, it's a non-woven fabric that's impossible to tear apart. For embellishments, I like using silk and yarn, glass beads maybe on yarn if I'm working in color. And if I'm embellishing for eco printing, I work in white and I use cellulose fiber. My favorite felting tools are <laughs> the minimalist roller and this prodder here. So the roller is excellent for shrinking felt and putting inside vessels to shape them. And the prodder is particularly good for working the seams of sculptural felt and really, really working out any ridges in your felt. I will put a link in the video description below once this gets uploaded after the live has ended. And for anybody interested in ordering tools, my friend who designed these in collaboration with me is offering a discount. So the discount code will be in the video. And my all time favorite felting book, which I will do a review of in another video, is Felt to Stitch by Sheila Smith, a wonderful book with all sorts of different techniques, but suitable for a beginner, but also suited to a more experienced felt maker. So I think that's it from Clashine. I hope you've enjoyed this live stream. Please consider subscribing to me here on YouTube. If you'd like updates, hit that little, little bell. And if you've enjoyed the video, give me the thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in a future video. Thank you everybody over and out from Clashine.